Hey, Dan here. You might have seen my video, the ENFP functions in three minutes. In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the four functions of an ENFP. We're going to look at what the functions are, but more importantly, how they work together and how you can use that information in your own life to be the best damn ENFP you can possibly be. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you know my philosophy. Knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. Knowing every little detail about how the functions work and the history of personality psychology and all that might be really interesting, but it's not going to serve you if you don't know how to apply it into creating an awesome life for yourself and those you love. So let's dive into the first function, which is extroverted intuition. And this is our main superpower, okay? One way to think of the four functions is that your primary function, for us again, extroverted intuition, that's the uh, N with the E, if you see it written out, that is what our advantage is in the world and all our other functions are meant to complement and balance out our primary function so that we can use it to its maximum potential. We are not meant to try to even ourselves out and just be a flatlined human being. That's not the point of the other functions. The point is to use them to help you make the most of your primary functions. And I'll give you an example of that. Our second function is introverted feeling, which is essentially about our internal sense, our feelings of what is right and wrong. You might use the term morals or values perhaps. And this allows us to do one thing, make decisions. And we do primarily make decisions based on our feelings. Now, us ENFPs, we like to think, ah, oh, yeah, no, I'm a logical person. I'm highly analytical. And Shut up, we're not. We might be smart. I, I did math contests as a kid. I played in chess tournaments. I, I can make really complex spreadsheets, absolutely. I did well in the sciences. I make my decisions with my feelings. And you only know that when you really spend time with someone who truly makes their decisions analytically and you realize that is not how we work. Now, before you think, oh wait, that's terrible, right? Isn't being analytical the way to be? Like we're in a STEM world, right? STEM is that whole science, technology, or engineering, math. That's what's most important. I don't know about you, but I've spent time with people who are highly logical thinkers and haven't, they have no sense of a gut instinct to do things and, uh, kind of painful how they make decisions. Like they, they're not very quick at it. And for me, I actually have found that developing my introverted feeling and getting a sense of what's important to me allows me to make very quick decisions. And that's important because our extroverted intuition, it's bringing in a wealth of information all the time, right? We are the opportunity spotters. We're the people going around and we're like, ah, oh, new idea, new idea. Oh yeah, this, that, that, I could do that. We come up with all these different things which is really good if we can decide on some of them to focus on. And that is the value of our introverted feeling is allowing us to develop a gut instinct, develop a sense of right and wrong and what we want in our lives and then make quick decisions. This is why I often say it's really important for ENFPs to do a lot of things and to make a lot of mistakes because we learn what's important to us. You're never going to figure out what you want in life by just sitting around and doing pros and cons lists from the age of 13. It's not going to happen. You're gonna figure it out by jumping into things, trying it out and realizing like that sucked or that was awesome and then adjusting from there. If you're someone who feels like you have no sense of this, like you always want to do everything, if, I, if let's say you're a business owner, I say to you, how big do you want to grow your business? Is your vision like an eight to 12 person company or do you want to be the Fortune 500 company? And you just say, I don't know, I want to be everything. Uh, well, you probably haven't developed this. And that's a big problem because on the business side, developing those types of companies are very different approaches. And if you're trying to kind of do everything or trying to keep all your options open, it means that you're going to have a lot of trouble making quick decisions, which is gonna eat up a ton of your energy. And I can guarantee will result in underperforming your potential by a huge margin. If you're someone who right now is struggling to make decisions in life, maybe you're trying to figure out what college to go to, or should you quit your job or end a marriage, or you're really indecisive and you're struggling with these kind of questions, it's a sign that you need to develop your introverted feeling more. If you had a really strong introverted feeling function, you'd connect more with what's right for you and likely be able to make that decision. 
One of the things that's good to know about how these functions develop in us, by the way, before we get to the third function, which is a very valuable one for us ENFPs, let me tell you, is that they tend to develop over different times in our life, let's say. So we start off with our extroverted intuition. It's fairly strong. I mean, we're not born with it, but that's what we'll develop in even our teens. And then in our 20s, and this is assuming normal development. Uh, some people, I think, develop a lot faster, and I have some theories on that and why that happens. And some people develop a lot slower. And I also have some theories on why that happens. I probably won't have time in this video, but I will share in another video on why I think some people develop really fast or slow. And I guess you can use that knowledge to then speed up your development. So do subscribe to the channel right now so you don't miss that video when it comes out. So I was saying this depends on normal development. So in your 20s, usually you develop your introverted feeling, which helps you know what's right and wrong for you and kind of figure your life out, right? Which makes sense actually. Right? That's kind of what a lot of people do in their 20s. They do a lot of things, they travel, they drink too much, they drink too little, they whatever else we won't get into. It's YouTube family friendly. And that's when you figure out yourself. And then your 30s, roughly speaking, is when you develop your third function, which is extroverted thinking. And extroverted thinking is all about bringing order to your external world, right? Introverted feeling is about internally, like what's right and wrong for you inside. Extroverted thinking is logically organizing the world around you, right? And I'm guessing there's some laughter on the other side of this camera now where you're like, yes, how do I do more of that? So extroverted thinking will never be our main strength. Don't get me wrong, right? Remember the point of the functions is to support your primary function. So I should say the support of the other three functions, right? So you're never going Going to become this highly organized ENTJ. ENTJs, their number one function, their primary function is extroverted thinking. So their entire life is about bringing order to things, about organizing things, and that's partly it. They want to bring certainty and structure to life. Where for us, our extroverted thinking serves the function of helping us be organized enough and good enough at doing and making things happen that we can then follow through on some of our ideas that come out through our extroverted intuition. Because if we are totally scatterbrained, and we've probably all met some ENFPs like this or been that ENFP at certain times, like in our early stages of life, I know I have, we have 30 things going on in our mind and we can't choose one because we haven't developed our introverted feeling. And even if we were to choose one, we can't really do anything about it, even the basics of like writing emails or setting up a simple website, something like that, because we haven't developed our extroverted thinking, these ideas aren't very valuable, right? You have to develop a way to make decisions and decide what you want to focus on and then to actually begin putting them into action. So we definitely want to develop our extroverted thinking and it is one of the keys to our success is to be able to become more effective, more organized. And listen, I'm not saying that we ever become extremely organized. The house I'm in right now, there's an extra bed Bedroom, and those beds have become a place where I just lie my clothing on. Doesn't make any sense. I don't think it's harming anyone, except my girlfriend who's an ENFJ and doesn't like disorder and mess. It's probably upsetting her sometimes. So my point is, I think I am somewhat developed in terms of my extroverted thinking. I work very hard at, to be able to make things happen and put things into action, but I'm still like a two if an ENTJ is a 10, right? I'm going to be down here. And the goal is just to develop your extroverted thinking enough so that you can implement your ideas and maybe build a team or find a partner or whatever else to help make those things happen. Now our last function is not as important in terms of developing early success, doing well in your career or school or making a business you start work. But it serves a purpose in more, I think, our, our mental health and long term. And it kind of makes sense because it's our fourth function and develops latest in life. And it is introverted sensing. And introverted sensing is essentially about connecting with the past. It's, it's about slowing down a little bit, at least in terms of how we use it, kind of documenting the past, reflecting on things. And you may see, I'll link to this maybe at the end or in the description if there's not room on the end screen there. I have another video that shares uh, insight for ENFPs about watching old movies and how it can be extremely calming for us. See, our main function is all about moving forward, right? 
Extroverted intuition is completely future. We do not look back, right? Our primary function, extroverted intuition, is all about looking forward. We are not looking to the back. We are not caring about the past very much at all. Again, you might think you do, but if you are actually an ENFP, you do not compared to other types. So we are all about looking to the future, which I think is generally a good thing. Surprise, surprise, I'm a little biased being Mr. ENFP here, but it does have some downsides and it can be anxiety and stress. If we're always going to the future, if everything is new and exciting and challenging, it's a good way to live, but there's times where we might get overwhelmed. There's times where there might be too much and connecting with our past can be a way to calm down a little bit. And that's where that video I mentioned comes in where it says, hey, like, take a Sunday and watch one of your favorite old movies. There won't be any newness. And that's part of it. It's to like give your extroverted intuition a bit of a rest and just calm down and think back to childhood, have some nostalgia. And that can be good for us occasionally. I'm not saying to live like that all the time, but like once a month or something, or if you're feeling a lot of stress, it's a great trick. My go-to movie is Fast Five, greatest movie series of all time, first of all, and I think the greatest of the series. We are who we are, right? Another way you can use introverted sensing is just remembering the past in terms of picking up lessons and learning from things. So I don't even need to tell you don't dwell on the past because you're probably not going to, at least not if you're functioning in a healthy way. Sometimes we do get trapped in that way, but generally we won't get stuck in the past and dwelling on it. But it's worth it occasionally reflecting, right? Making sure you're not repeating the same mistake. I have journals and I write notes everywhere and I've probably read one in a hundred pages again since I've written it. You know, that's the very extroverted intuition way of being. But think about occasionally reflecting on the past. If you do make a big mistake, if you have a business fail or a relationship that you really enjoyed and take a bit of time to reflect on it and learn from it. Again, it's not where we live. It's not where we're supposed to live, but it is worth using that occasionally because when we reflect on the past and can learn from it, we can then adjust our introverted thinking and maybe even reprogram our extroverted and intuition a little bit to be like, hey, these bad things happen when I do this. So can you look for those patterns? We can kind of reprogram our top two functions to help us not make the same mistakes, let's say. My purpose with this channel is to help you to get to know yourself really well, to ultimately become the best version of yourself and to create an awesome life possible for you and those you love. I do a lot about personality psychology, primarily for ENFPs, although not always just ENFPs. And it's always about real world application and how you can take this knowledge and actually create that awesome life for yourself, not just bury your head in a textbook. If you've enjoyed this video and you're interested in more of this type of learning, definitely hit the subscribe button. I assume you've done that already. And you can head over to dreamsaroundtheworld.com forward slash ENFP training. I'll have a card pop up for that as well or a link below in the description. That is a place that I share a lot more insight. So definitely head over and check out that free training as well. Thank you for watching. If there's an ENFP in your life that you think would benefit from this, or maybe a close friend, business partner, or lover who you think might benefit from understanding how you work and then be able to support you more in how you operate and how you can become better, do send them this video. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video soon.